Which headphones sound better, the AirPods Max or the Sonos Ace? Well, the answer is not as straightforward as you think. It's tricky because everybody, oh, that's a little voice crack there. <laughs> It's tricky because everybody perceives sounds differently. So the question becomes, how do we evaluate headphones in an objective manner so that you can make the right buying decision? In this video, we are gonna be taking a look at some objective measurements that we took at Soundguys Labs for both of these headphones, compare the sound quality of the two headphones, and I'll even give my insight as to the listening experience with my ears. I just really hope that with all this information, we can help you figure out which headphones to buy and maybe even come to a determination of which has better sound quality. This video is gonna get a little a little nerdy, a little geeky, and there's nothing wrong with that. And if you start to feel overwhelmed, don't worry. I'm gonna have a bunch of helpful explainers show up on screen as I talk about the measurements or as I use certain vocabulary so that you can follow along and really go in depth with these two headphones, or at least how they sound. So to start off, we're gonna take a look at some objective measurements of these two headphones. More specifically, we're gonna look at the frequency response chart. Now the frequency response chart is essentially a way we use to visualize how these headphones are reproducing certain frequencies. And as you can see, here we've got the frequency response of both the Sonos Ace, that's in blue, and the Apple AirPods Max, which is in a dotted yellow line. But you'll also notice a third curve. The preference curve is essentially a measurement of what we think will sound good to most people. So the general rule of thumb here is that the closer a headphone's frequency response lines up with our curve, the more likely you are to like the sound of that headphone. With that in mind, let's take a look at this frequency response chart from left to right. So as you can see here in the sub bass bass region, the AirPods Max pretty closely follows our target curve. Any bass emphasis above five decibels, some people might find that to be a bit too loud or too fatiguing to listen to during long periods of times. Now, while the AirPods Max closely aligns with our preference curve in the bass region, we do notice that the Sonos Ace has some significant deviations here. There's, an, there's a spike at around 25 hertz, and there's a little bit more bass emphasis between 40 to 200 hertz. Again, this added bass emphasis does mean that kick drums, bass synths, and other low-end instruments might sound a bit boomier than you're used to, which is not necessarily a bad thing. There are some people who actually like like a lot of bass emphasis, but it is something to keep in mind that just low-end instruments will sound louder on the Sonos Ace. Now in the mid frequencies, both headphones seem to follow the preference curve pretty closely in the mids here. They also both have a bit of a de-emphasis around 1.5 to 2 kilohertz. Although the Sonos Ace does have more of a de-emphasis in this range than the AirPods Max. In theory, this de-emphasis could reduce the detail from sounds like finger snaps, high octave synths, but it's not gonna be to a degree that will drastically change your listening experience. Basically, don't worry about it. But then if you go, keep going to the right, to the treble frequencies above two kilohertz, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. As you can see here in the curve, AirPods Max, shown in yellow, has a little bit less of a treble emphasis than our preference curve, particularly between two to five kilohertz. Now this can be a little bit of a problem as this lack of treble emphasis might reduce the clarity of stringed instruments, female vocals, and other high octave instruments. Like, I don't know, a kazoo? Yeah, find me a song with a kazoo in it as a lead instrument. <laughs> but on the other hand, the Sonos Ace has kind of the opposite problem where there is quite this overemphasis between five to eight kilohertz, as you can see from this little mountain peak here. Again, it shouldn't be bad for most songs, but depending on what you're listening to, this could cause hi-hats, cymbals, and vocal sibilance like S sounds to sound a little too shrill, which again could also lead to a bit of a fatiguing listening experience. So based on the frequency response alone, what does this tell us about the Sonos Ace and the AirPods Max? Well, just a couple things actually. The Sonos Ace isn't bad, you're likely to still enjoy the sound of these headphones. But over time, you might find that the bass and treble emphasis of these headphones might cause you to feel a little tired or grow fatigued when listening during longer listening sessions, and especially if you're listening to bass heavy music. However, to Sonos' credit, because the Sonos Ace actually has more treble emphasis than the AirPods Max, you're likely to hear more detail in stringed instruments or female vocals on these headphones compared to the AirPods Max. Because the AirPods Max lines up better with our preference curve, it's easy to assume that the AirPods Max, on paper, is the better pick. Or is it? Frequency response is not the only way to determine the sound quality of a pair of headphones. It would be ridiculous to say that the AirPods Max have better sound quality just because the frequency response seems to line up better with a preference curve. Frequency response is a factor, not the rule. So if frequency response is not the end all or be all answer for sound quality, how else can we assess sound quality for the Sonos Ace and AirPods Max? How do we figure out which sounds better objectively? Well, 
there's MDAX. But before that, I'd like to encourage you to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below on the types of videos you want to see next. Please let us know. We love hearing from you guys. So for those who aren't familiar, MDAX, or the Multidimensional Audio Quality System, try saying that fast three times, we've been using this system on our website for a while now for our sound quality scores, and MDAX is a way to assess headphones based on listening tests conducted with real people. Now, because MDAX was developed on actual human perception, the system can essentially tell us what a virtual panel of listeners would rate a given pair of headphones or earbuds. Getting into MDAX and how it works and why we're using it is another gigantic can of worms and I do not have time to explain in this video, but if you do wanna learn more about that system, check out our article on soundguys.com. But with that in mind, let's take a look at the MDAX results for both the Sonos Ace and the Apple AirPods Max. Starting with Timbre, you can see that the Sonos Ace has a higher score here, 4.7, while the AirPods Max is a 4.4. Now, based on these scores, it suggests that our virtual panel of listeners and most people are likely to prefer the tuning of the Sonos Ace over the AirPods Max. As for distortion, things get flipped on its head a little bit here. The Sonos Ace gets a 3.2, while AirPods Max gets a 3.9. Now, I gotta say here that both these scores, despite the 0.7 point difference, they're, they're good scores. But based on these readings, it suggests that the AirPods Max produces a cleaner reproduction of the signal compared to the Sonos Ace. Although from my experience of listening to both headphones, you're very unlikely to hear any perceivable differences in terms of distortion, unless you have like super hearing in which you should apply to work here. <laughs> and then we've also got immersiveness. Here, tides turn again. Sonos Ace 4.2, AirPods Max 3.8. Now the score suggests that more people are gonna find that the Sonos Ace are a more immersive set of headphones than the AirPods Max, and that you'll get a better sense of 3D space with the Sonos Ace. Now, mind you, this immersiveness score is based on stereo listening. It doesn't take into account any spatial technologies like Apple Spatial Audio or Dolby Atmos. So even in a stereo setting, the Sonos Ace, based on these scores, are likely to provide a more immersive experience. The overall score does reward the AirPods Max over the Sonos Ace. You got 4.3 for Sonos, 4.5 for the AirPods Max. Anything above a four on the one to five scale for MDAX is very good. At this point, it like you're, you're really just picking hairs. But overall, based on these scores, it does suggest that our virtual panel of listeners are more likely to prefer the AirPods Max over the Sonos Ace. Because even though the Sonos Ace had a higher score in timbre and immersiveness, it's likely that the 0.7 difference in distortion dinged the Sonos Ace's score, and it's why the AirPods Max pretty much won just by a hair. Now at this point, we've got two objective measurements telling us kind of the same story, that the AirPods Max sounds better than the Sonos Ace. Now, do I believe that to be the case? Eh, not necessarily. And why do I think that? Well, because I listened to both of these headphones for weeks on end, and I have some thoughts. Now, I'm gonna be breaking up my subjective listening experience into stereo and Dolby Atmos slash spatial audio, because both listening experiences are quite different from each other, and actually, can wildly change my perception of which sounds better. So make sure to keep an open mind and stay tuned for both subjective listening experiences. Now, when listening to both of these headphones in stereo, I just, I really gotta put this up at the front. It doesn't matter what you buy, they both sound really good. But if you wanna pick hairs, then let's pick hairs, because I did notice a few differences listening to different songs with both headphones. One of my favorite songs right now is from Billie Eilish's new album, Chihiro. Very good song, very bass heavy. I thought the AirPods Max sounded really good. I was very happy with the bass reproduction. It wasn't too loud. It wasn't masking any of the vocals or any of the higher octave synths. It was just a very pleasant experience listening to that song. On the Sonos Ace, the kick drums and bass synths were a little too loud for my liking, almost fatiguing if I were to listen to the song over and over again. However, I did hear more detail in very high frequency noises, like like the scratchy, creaky sounding synths, the fluttering synths and the back vocals. They just sounded a lot clearer, and more detailed on the Sonos Ace compared to the AirPods Max. Again, both headphones sound really good with the song, but the AirPods Max did lead to a more comfortable listening experience. 
especially in the low end. Now, I also listened to Hans Zimmer's score for Interstellar, specifically the song No Time for Caution. With the AirPods Max, I did have a harder time hearing some of the higher octave notes from the organ, and I also just felt that the violins weren't as detailed as what I was used to. And this is especially apparent when the song builds towards the end and the entire orchestra is really, is really going at it with strings. Wow, the music terminology is fantastic. I just felt that the cellos started to overpower the violins. It also doesn't help that the song has a bit of a roll off starting at around three kilohertz because the AirPods Max also doesn't have as high of a treble emphasis I want in this region. But the Sonos Ace, oh man, I really like listening to that song with the Sonos Ace because I felt that the Sonos Ace also had just a wider stereo image. I felt more enveloped in the track. The sound felt like it was coming a little bit from the sides, kind of what you'd expect when you're listening to a live orchestra. Not only that, I also felt that there was a lot more clarity coming through with the violins with the Sonos Ace compared to the AirPods Max, which just was really helpful as the song builds and builds and builds and gets to the more instrumentally busier parts of the track. Now again, if I wasn't listening to either of these headphones side by side, I wouldn't be nitpicking. I would actually be enjoying both headphones individually. You can't go wrong with either of these. But if I had to choose one, at least for the stereo listening experience, I actually would choose the AirPods Max because again, with the bass emphasis kind of being where I like it, just at around five decibels, I found the AirPods Max to just be less fatiguing to listen to over time when listening to stereo tracks. Now the Sonos Ace again sounds really good and I love that it has a pretty wide stereo image, but by default, the bass just sounds way too loud coming out of this. And the only way I would be able to have a comfortable listening experience with the Sonos Ace is if I went into the EQ and brought the bass down to about minus five or minus six, which is really easy to do. So that's why I'm not dinging these headphones. Like these are, these are still really solid for listening to music. But here's where things get really interesting. Both of these headphones support spatial audio technology. So the AirPods Max supports Apple spatial audio and the Sonos Ace supports Dolby Atmos. And so when listening to Dolby Atmos tracks on both of these headphones, the experience was quite different and might actually change your opinion on which is better. But before I actually talk about my experience with listening in Dolby Atmos, I should first explain how I did my listening tests because I didn't just put one headphone then put the other. I needed to have a baseline of what a proper Dolby Atmos track should sound like when it's professionally mixed and monitored. So in order to have a good point of comparison, I went to a Dolby Atmos listening room. That's right here at Sound Guys Labs. We have our own 7.2.4 reference listening room. This was important because I wanted to get a baseline on how Adobe Atmos song should sound like in a real environment. So for my Adobe Atmos comparison, I started by listening to tracks through Tidal in our space here. And then I put on the AirPods Max and listened to Dolby Atmos tracks using Apple Music. And then I switched over to the Sonos Ace listening to Dolby Atmos tracks in Tidal. Now, why didn't I use the same streaming service for all the listening tests? Well, that is a complicated issue that has to do with like different programs using different renderers. It's complicated. It's, it's complicated. And I'll make a video on it in the future if you want. So yeah, anyway, back to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> so I tested a bunch of tracks, but I'm only gonna talk about three of them. The first one being Eternity by Anima, very good song. The AirPods Max, I just found that there was overall a lack of clarity, especially for the higher end instruments. For example, there is like this, riser that happens before the first bass drop and there's also a saw synth lead throughout the song and there are also soft pads that kind of play as the song builds up for the first time i just didn't hear them as well on the airpods max when compared to a proper dolby atmos listening environment as for the Sonos Ace, the snare drums sounded a lot more detailed. Those risers and soft pads that I was talking about earlier in the song, they came through a lot more clearly. With this song in particular, listening with the Sonos Ace, it was able to better reproduce the Dolby Atmos listening environment compared to the AirPods Max, at least from my ears. Moving on, one of my favorite Dolby Atmos tracks ever, it's Oxytocin by Billie Eilish, Queen. <laughs> uh, the AirPods Max also sounded really good, really good reproduction of the rear speakers in in, again, a binaural environment with the headphones. At around one minute, 55 seconds in, you start to hear like these very subtle, deep bass drums. I thought the AirPods Max did a great job of simulating the rear drums in the headphones, which is not an easy thing to do. And then with the Sonos Ace, 
same kind of story here. I thought that the kind of the breaths that are on the surround speakers, they sounded a lot clearer on the Sonos Ace. Voices sounded like they were coming more from the side speakers, whereas the AirPods Max sounded like they were coming a bit more in front rather than from the side. I just felt like I could hear more of the room effects on the Sonos Ace, which is why it made me feel like it was more immersive. And then of course, one of my other favorite Dolby Atmos tracks, Beginnings Are Such Delicate Times from Hans Zimmer for the Dune 2 soundtrack. I chose these because of the very bass heavy drums that kind of pan to the rears at the beginning. And this track also has a lot of nice sounds coming from the ceiling. Now the AirPods Max does a great job in recreating the feeling of listening to sounds from the ceiling speakers. So you hear those rain sticks and the kind of that, that higher end synth that pans around. But then the Sonos Ace. Oh, the Sonos Ace. I, I really like those. <laughs> I, I thought that I could hear more of the room effects. It just, again, the, the illusion of 3D space is more apparent for me. The, the Sonos Ace do a really good job at recreating the sensation of listening to those loud drums at the beginning on the rear speakers, it, it, more so than the AirPods Max. However, just because it might do a better job at recreating a proper Dolby Atmos environment doesn't mean it sounds better. And why do I know this? Well, it's because I asked my colleague Chris to also give a listen to a few songs in the Dolby Atmos room and then with these headphones, and here's what he had to say. Between the Sonos Ace and the AirPods Max, which did you like better? Which do you think sounded better? I don't know if it's my older ears or what, but Apple by a hair. The Apple headphones, it wasn't as overbearing. It just seemed like you were in 3D space rather than just, you know, a reverberant room. What did the Sonos Ace sound like to you? I was able to hear more effects you know, from the Dolby Mix, which didn't necessarily enhance the experience. <laughs> Maybe it was just an illusion of echoes, but I mean, you could hear it, and I, I'm not entirely wild about that kind of <laughs> illusion of three, you know, the three dimensional space. While it, a semi reflective room is a good listening room to have, I not, don't necessarily want to hear echoes. Determining sound quality objectively is extremely hard because again, a chart can only tell you so much and it's only one aspect about what influences the sound quality. Everyone listens to sounds differently. And for me, I prefer the Sonos Ace because of how it reproduces room effects like reverb, especially when listening in Dolby Atmos. But as you saw from my colleagues, some people might not like the apparent reverb noise. Some people might classify a better experience as hearing more of the low end, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, both of these headphones are good. And more importantly, if Sonos and Apple are able to do such a good job on their first pair of headphones, imagine just how good the second generation Sonos Ace and AirPods Max are going to be. Yeah, that's going to be wild.